In today's wrap-up, environmental activists accuse Lydian International of preparing to start mining operations at Amulsar. The Green Climate Fund will provide Armenia with a $10 million grant for reforestation. Artsakh's economy ministry announced plans to build 1,000 apartments per year. And the PM has attended a session of Armenia's Security Council. On the 20th of August, environmental activists and residents coming from Jermuk held a march in the Armenian capital, protesting against the controversial Amulsar gold mine. They sought clarification from the government, which as of yet is still being unclear as to whether it will allow the mine to operate or not. Whilst many of the protesters were in Yerevan, employees of Lydian International, the Anglo-Canadian consortium running the mine, brought mechanics and other vehicles to the mine. This resulted in the environmental activists accusing Lydian of preparing to commence mining operations. According to the activists, around 100 guards started moving vehicles and outposts set up by the protesters. Lydian meanwhile released a statement saying that the protest blockades were on company land and therefore legally could be removed. Minister of the Environment Romanos Petrosian has announced that the Green Climate Fund, a UN-sanctioned environmental fund, has approved a grant worth $10 million for reforestation in Armenia. According to Petrosian, the funds will be used to establish nurseries, rehabilitate forests, and improve renewable energy access in rural areas. Armenia's government has pledged to plant 10 million trees across the country, though some have criticized the initiative of lacking horticultural expertise and planning. According to Arm News, the Ministry of the Economy of Artach is planning a five-year plan, within which 1,000 apartments will be built per year. The government in Artach envisages starting the initiative at the beginning of 2021. According to the Ministry of Labour, Social Affairs and Housing of Artach, it will be primarily aimed at providing housing for families. As of yet, budgetary details have not been released. During a sitting of Armenia's Security Council, Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan spoke about the national security situation in the country. Regarding the 2020 skirmishes, he stated that Azerbaijan has failed to demonstrate that it does not want a military solution. He also called the skirmish a victory for Armenian forces, adding, however, that his government has consistently stated that it only wants a solution through peaceful negotiations. Pashinyan criticized Turkey's destabilizing role in this regard, lamenting that Ankara's actions are in part responsible for the escalations. Russian Foreign Minister said Sergei Lavrov also spoke about the 2020 skirmishes in an interview with a Russian newspaper. Lavrov stated that the escalation began when Armenian forces tried to revive an old checkpoint that was not being used, which caused Azerbaijani forces to launch an offensive. The Russian foreign minister said that Russia mediated the ceasefire in July and is in contact with the OSCE and both sides to restart the peace talks. Finally, Armenian President Armen Sarkisyan has handed military honors to Armenian servicemen. Captain Ruben Sanamyan received the highest honor of National Hero of Armenia. Sanamyan led personnel during the 2020 skirmishes and conducted dangerous engineering operations, as well as taking part in search ops. And finally, in January 2019, the Yerevan municipality announced plans to remove a number of structures housing different businesses in the area around the Yerevan Opera House. Yerevan Mayor Haik Marutian has stated that the city authorities plan to convert the area into a green space. So far, two cafes have been dismantled and one has closed down, but still some cafes remain in the area. Sivonet's team went to the Opera House Park to speak to business owners and also spoke to municipality officials to see what is the status regarding this green zone project.